one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We currently do not have a quorum, so we're going to take some things out of order. Um, I'll go ahead and read the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. Are there any Metro Council people in persons in? I don't know the new people. Yeah, Mr. former Councilman Pryor. Yeah, he's in the hallway. He has a okay. We'll come back. We'll come back. Um, we're going to move to special presentations and introductions. Uh, for these, we want to take no more than seven minutes for your presentation. And we're going to start with Dr. Sherry Barkin to present annual update of the Nashville Collaborative Partnership with Vanderbilt Children's Hospital and Metro Parks. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 We can hear you. Excellent. We are delighted to be here today. And we're going to give you a very quick overview of the Nashville Collaborative. I understand that our slides might not be working, so I'm just going to okay. speak in an old-fashioned way directly to you. <laughs> so the Nashville Collaborative is something we started now 11 years ago together, and this partnership is between Parks and Recreation and the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt and the Division of General Pediatrics. I'm the Division Chief of General Pediatrics, a practicing pediatrician. And I have had the good fortune to be working with Parks and Rec now for 11 years. So what I'd like to do very briefly is give you a quick overview of some of the major contributions that we have been able to make together. Then I'll focus on our most recent contributions, let you know about an exciting upcoming opportunity as well. So the Nashville Collaborative launched in 2008. We have developed and tested 11 programs. All of the programs that we develop are focused on how we can reduce childhood obesity and improve both parent and child health outcomes while striving to reduce health disparities. Uh, we've reached thousands, more than 10,000 families in our community over our 11 years and we are guided by a community advisory board that represents more than 15 different community-based organizations. Some highlights of our programs include that we have been one of the very few programs to show that we can reduce early childhood obesity. And this is no small feat. It's quite difficult to reverse obesity once you have it, and it's for that reason that most of our programs are about preventing obesity. Uh, that program was so successful that the National Association of Counties came here to Nashville to learn about what we were doing together and what was working to see what we could spread. And in fact, some of our Nashville Collaborative programs, as Devon and Sherry Hips know so well, have been spread across the country uh, to Georgia, to Michigan, to Nevada. Now, we've also showed that by bringing families into our incredible community recreation centers that we build patrons, sustained patrons, who continue to come and utilize the incredible programs. To me, what I think is such a treasure of Nashville uh, are parks and recreation programs. Uh, additionally, we have been able to demonstrate through our studies together that the after-school programming that Parks and Rec provides actually yields much more physical activity, moderate to vigorous physical activity, the type that's associated with improving health outcomes, more than the typical after-school program. And we've got data to show that you can even reduce the gender disparity. So you might not realize this, but as children get older, the disparity between females and males begins to grow, with males usually still achieving physical activity uh, recommendations, but females quickly falling behind. And we were able to show with some of our national collaborative programs that we could reduce that gender gap starting early. We have a special highlight 
that we wanted to emphasize. This is actually the 11th of our 11 programs. It's called Teaching Kitchen Outreach. It's very pragmatic. In fact, everything we do is family-based, community-centered, measurable, and sustainable. And if we, as a steering committee, don't believe it's sustainable, then it's just a good idea, but we're not moving it forward to test. So what we showed with Teaching Kitchen Outreach, it's an experiential program. It's hands-on, so you don't watch, you do. Then you practice, and then you do it again. Teaching Kitchen Outreach builds children as early as age five and all the way through age 15 to build healthy cooking and eating habits. And importantly, it's not led by Vanderbilt, it's led by Parks and Recreation because what we have created together is an actual partnership where we look at bi-directionality of the relationships, and I should say tri-directionality because we're very involved with the library and how we integrate education along with improving health behaviors and health outcomes. So children learn how to prepare these meals themselves. And here's something that's really exciting about TKO, Teaching Kitchen Outreach. In this past year, because of this effective partnership, we expanded that program from two parks and recreation programs to 20. And we were able to do that in how many, how long do you think it would take to do that? <laughs> throw, throw out a number in terms of months. How long do you think it would take to do that? Six months. How, how, long, how long did it take us to do that, Sivan? We did it less than six. We did it less than six. We did actually, in, we did it in six weeks. Wow. Why could we do this in six weeks? Because we have this incredible partnership that is really effective. And because of that, we've developed infrastructure that allows us to really grow, expand, and reach large numbers of families with our effective programs. So among all children who participated, we improved cooking self-efficacy by 74%. That's unbelievable. There's nothing in the literature that shows that you can do that, and we're writing that up right now. We also showed we improved um, uh, cooking attitudes and fruit and vegetable preference. Importantly, we really made a difference in little kids before they even knew to not like their broccoli. <laughs> um, Something else that we do together is we don't just learn together, but then we try to spread what we learn. So this isn't a secret. We want people to know what works. And one of the ways that we've done that is we have developed center-specific feedback to all 20 of those participating centers. So I'm just going to ask my colleague, Ellie Poe. He's going to pass out to you what we call a TKO center-specific report. So I can tell you what the study showed if I roll it up across all of these 20 centers. But we know that each center wants to know how did they do. So I'm highlighting Coleman because Coleman was our flagship starting point. But we've done this for all of the participating community recreation centers. And what you'll see is what did we learn in general? And that's what I just presented to you. And then you'll see below that specifically how did Coleman do? How many children did they reach? What did we learn at Coleman? This really is important because it's a personal relationship. And we know that parks and recreation isn't one thing, it's many things. So on to what comes next. We have been delighted and fortunate that we were selected as a semi-finalist from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And they are interested in our ideas to continue to build bridges for community uh, organizations. This particular one will build a bridge between parks and recreation and Head Start. And it's specifically looking at how we address food insecurity. So you might not know that for Head Start families, up to 35% of families experience food insecurity, not knowing if their next meal will be there or if their children might be hungry sometime in the next month. Food security isn't just one thing. It's actually episodic. You go in and out of it. And so this proposal, which we designed together, is about building systems changes with our partners at Head Start and linking them to TKO, which Parks and Rec already owns and does an incredible job with. So just in summary, the Nashville Collaborative really serves as an example to other parks and recreation programs across the state in how we develop two generation solutions for both parents and children to address obesity and health disparities effectively. And 
If only you could see these fantastic pictures which feature Monique Odom and <laughs> Stevan Nellums, uh, as well as many other people of our partnership in Parks and Recreation. Uh, truly, this is a real partnership that doesn't work without all of us together, and we're really grateful for your support. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Does the board have any questions for Dr. Barkin? Barkin? Maybe Sorry. you could send the pictures to us. Yeah, well, since we can see them. And because Terry works with the library, something that's really important is that as we do our work, often our comparator group is how we build school readiness mm -hmm. and teach families how to advocate for their children in the school system. And through that program and that partnership, which is also part of the Nashville Collaborative, we have improved how people use the library, how parents who speak other languages learn English, and how we advance school readiness together. That also has created sustained library patrons for more than three years. So mm -hmm. thanks to the library for that. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you for your partnership. We appreciate Absolutely. you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. We're going to move to the Friends of Metro Parks, Disabilities, and Magic programs to present an annual update to the board. Good okay. afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Janet Carpenter and I'm president of the Friends of Metro Parks, Disability, and Magic program. A mouthful. <laughs> I have a, a few things I want to hand out real quick so as I go along you can follow me. And one is, um, this is just kind of a schedule that we do. It's a community schedule and a um, weekly, a monthly program. And then this is our numbers. And we'll go over those and that's just easier to hand it back to you. Okay, thank you. You need the extras? Um, no. Okay, not sure if we do. Um, one of y'all that don't know about Metro Park Disability Program, we serve um, adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We're currently serving 80 individuals in our day program that runs four days a week and 125 individuals through our sports um, programs, which would be our sports league that they have doubled in size just in the last year. Um, as you can see at the top of the page that I gave y'all, it talks about our mission, which is to provide every citizen of Nashville and Davidson County with intellectual and developmental disabilities with the equal opportunity for safe, <coughs> recreational, and cultural activities, that regardless of their age, abilities, appropriate programs, and activities that highlight their abilities. So as you see on that top line, the program runs four days a week. We have a total of 78 participants. We have a waiting list of 161. Our waiting list has doubled in the last year. Um, we have two full-time staff, and believe it or not, four, four, four part-time staff that run this program. Of course, we do have volunteers, too. Um, on Tuesday, we have bowling. That's where they are now. There's 96 that bowl on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we have basketball on Friday and Saturday starting up. We just got through with soccer. We're getting, ready, uh, we're getting ready to do soccer, and we just had flag football. We're getting ready to participate in Special Olympics this weekend. Um, bocce is a spring activity, and we're hoping to get softball started um, probably in the spring, maybe early summer. <laughs> it's one of those things that keeps getting backed up so we don't have enough time. Um, the other thing that we do besides the sports league, and the sports leagues are open to anybody that has a disability. We do them at Ellington Park. There, we have volunteers that come from Belmont and David Lipscomb that help us be partners. Uh, we also use uh, West Park for basketball and volleyball, and we have those sports leagues. So we kind of use our things around us and try to get as many people as we can involved. Um, we also have done art program, art workshops this year. We've had six. We've had dance instructors to come in. We've had music instructors. If you come to our gala this coming weekend, not this coming weekend, but November the 23rd, you'll get to see all that, and that continues to grow. Um, we also have community day participation. One of the calendars I showed you shows just the community day. So those are for people who are not necessarily in our program that but go to Rochelle or maybe are at home or they're working other days and they can't be in the program because we have a waiting list. Uh, so we have those things that they do. And one of the big pro things they do is bowling. Uh, we go to Belmont, um, Bell Court Movie Theater probably at least once a month, they partner with us to let's see free shows and popcorn and the interaction. So we have a good time doing that also. 
um, so that's community days, at least two a month, have 115 participants in that. Um, so we continue to grow. Then we have Special Olympics. We are probably the feeder for Nashville as far as getting people involved in Special Olympics. And so we um, have at least 55 participants. Our big thing is probably summer games. We're getting ready to do flag football this weekend. We'll do basketball. Starting the kids, can't wait for that's their favorite one, starting probably in November. Um, and um, we have volunteers and coaches, 12 of those. We're also involved with Best Buddies, cheerleading, and just the performances that we do. Um, our, thing, our goal right now, we are serving only 3% of Davidson County's IDD people, citizens. So Glenn would like to grow it to 25%. So he's going to be asking for more staff, which we know probably is not going to happen immediately, but if we we, can, that's we one will. of those things that we really need because the parents go, well, I've been on the waiting list for three years now. Why can't I get in? So that's why he decided to do the community days in the sports leagues is to bring those people in. Um, Okay, let's see. Um, the other thing that we've done, is two, two really exciting things. This past year we got a video that we could show for marketing and fundraising. Uh, I will send it to y'all because I couldn't do it in here, so I will send it to y'all see that. We have a short one that's about 90 seconds and then we have a longer one that's about four minutes that we can take around. So we're excited about that. And then our magic group has really taken off this year. Um, we have five participants. It's more of a one-on-one -on -one because they're doing dexterity and mobility and processing and how to do their hands and all that. So this, what they've been working on is what they call close-up magic. So at the gala, they're gonna have different tables set up. I got dry mouth all of a sudden, sorry. Set up, and you can go to the different tables to see their magic. So I am going to pass out all of y'all invitations to come to the gala November the 23rd. If you've not been, please come. It is well worth it. So, uh, and they are also planning their, they are now um, members of the International Brotherhood of Magicians. And they're going to their first magic convention in 2020 in Pigeon Forge. So they're really moving along. So I think Tom Stone would be excited. Um, and let's see, I think, oh, last but not least, the gala. <laughs> we will, it's going to be called a magical night. We're going to have hors d'oeuvres and a silent auction from 5 to 6.30. They'll be performing songs through sign, magic, music, and dance about 7 to 8.30. Uh, they will allow, this will allow program participants to showcase their skills and talents that they have learned and developed through the MPDP program. It's also our major fundraiser, so if you know anybody, please <coughs> tell them to come out. Tickets are only $30, so that's not bad. And that's my spiel. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions from the board? I'm sorry, I'm, <clears throat> I'm um, sorry that I'm new to the board and I don't know about, I'm okay. not familiar with how this works. Are you a separate nonprofit or are you within Metro Parks? We are a Friends Of, Okay. so we're a nonprofit. So there's a, the Friends Of is a nonprofit. The dis Disabilities Program is in the department. And so okay. we help right. promote the disability program right. is what we do. We help with fundraising and groups for parents and the art classes yeah. and that. And we um, probably spend $600 a year on tickets for access rides so they can get to the different events and that kind of thing. That's so we're more supportive of the disability program. Right, and so the staff that she mentioned are Metro, Metro Parks staff. Yes. Okay, the two, the two full-time staff. Yes, the two full-time staff. Hey, what? I did you just add, that was an excellent summary of what the program does. Yeah. Uh, the Friends Group, because a lot of these participants don't have the resources, the Friends Group, and, and Parks doesn't have the resources to allow, you know, the, there's only so much we have. So they fund themselves. The Friends Group work does the effort to create the funds so that all of these folks can participate in these programs, go on these field trips, you know, do, do all of these incredible things that they do. So they're, they're an awesome group. Absolutely. They, it, to be in the um, program itself, it's a fee of 75, or donation, excuse me, a donation of $75 per sem semester. So some of ours just don't have the money. So we do at least six scholarships every session. There's three sessions sessions a year. 
So, um, and we help provide other things as needed. You know. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Point of clarification, there are 161 people on the waiting list across all of the programs that you all are able to offer? No, to get into the park program itself, it's over at Sports Flex, which is a mm -hmm. day program. <coughs> Monday, right. right now it's been running Monday through Thursday. In some time it runs Tuesday through Friday, <laughs> just to confuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a four day a week program. Some people, a lot of them just come Tuesday and Thursday, some come all four days, some come Monday and Wednesday. From what time to what time uh, they get there between 8 and 8.30 in the morning and they don't leave to 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And you said that the, that one particular person said they've been on the waiting list for three years. Mm -hmm. Is that about average? Yes, it's getting longer because because our patient, no, excuse me, because our clients are older, they stay in the program longer. We have clients that are 70 years old. Mm -hmm. We've got some in their 50s now. Uh, and then they're probably 20 years, 20, 30, mm -hmm. 40 is kind of the main group. So as they get, so until they opt out not to come anymore, we don't have a spot. Mm -hmm. So that's why Glenn has developed kind of the sports leagues and some of the other things that we do. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Carpenter, for your time, and we appreciate your partnership yeah, as well you. with Carpenter. Thank you, Julie. You need your little, with uh, <coughs> free uh, passes here to the gala. <laughs> thank you so much. You are welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for putting up with me. He's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move to the Friends of Metro Dance to present their annual update to the board. Hi. We have a PowerPoint presentation we were hoping to show you guys, so uh, with your permission, we'll email it to you afterwards. So you can that would see. be great. Just imagine that you can see what I'm saying. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Janice Turner and I'm the friends of, uh, president of Friends of Metro Dance. I'm here today with Lori Ford, our president-elect, and Catherine Wilkening, dance supervisor for Metro Parks Dance Division. We're happy to be able to present to the board today. The mission of Friends of Metro Dance is to enhance the heart of, art of dance in the community, enhance, enrich the programs of the Metro Parks Dance Division through fundraising and volunteerism, and to encourage the growth of dancers of all ages and abilities. Our board is comprised of 15 members and made up of parents, adult dancers, and those who work in the dance profession. This year we are in the process of aligning our com committees to a new strategic plan. It's a work in progress. So some of our current committees include fundraising, community outreach and grant funding, and promotions. Friends of Art Metro Dance is here for the advocacy of dance. Dance is valuable for our society. Not only is it physical interaction, it teaches personal understanding of movement and how to work within a group. For our youngest citizens, dance is a natural gateway into the world of physical movement, creativity, and emotional understanding. For school-aged children, involvement in dance allows students to tap into emotional understanding of themselves and others, and it paves the way for greater learning in other areas. There is a direct connection between kinesthetic learning and student achievement. For adults, dance can help with cognitive performance as well as psychological well-being. It is the goal of Friends of Metro Dance to advocate for the increasing the availability of dance to the community of Nashville. Last year, Friends of Metro Dance supported artist in resident Winship Boyd and dancers from her project Papa Luguay Exposed as she workshopped and then performed a part of her piece with adults and children in our community centers. We're making plans for a spring break camp with Winship and additional international artists that will focus on dance and African culture. Our Dancing with Parkinson's class is weekly. It is led by a certified dance movement therapist. It's free of charge for people with Parkinson's and their caregivers. The class increases flexibility and strength and is a great activity for the partners to do together. Friends of Metro Dance is proud to partner with the Duncan Dance Project and the Conservancy for a second Isadora Duncan event performed at the Parthenon with the Portara Vocal Ensemble uh, March 27th through 29th of this coming year. 
a lot of what Friends of Metro Dance does is in, in support of the Centennial Youth Ballet. Um, and I'm going to go through some of the things that we do for them. Summer intensives, as the name implies, are in depth demanding program in the summer that dancers attend to improve their skill set. These programs give the dancers exposure to other teaching methods and styles. They provide connections within the dance community and are paramount for those who wishing to pursue a professional career in dance. As you can imagine, the cost of such instruction is outreach for many of our students. Friends of Metro Dance works with Dance Division to provide high quality pre-professional level ballet training, bringing in nationally renowned teaching artists who teach in a range of ballet styles and repertory, including classical, neoclassical, and contemporary. We also bring in local artists to teach modern, Afro-Caribbean, hip-hop, Pilates, and more for a two-week summer intensive. Although there is a tuition, it's a fraction of what an intensive normally costs as it's subsidized by Friends of Metro Dance. Additionally, Friends of Metro Dance supports strong, healthy dancers with injury prevention workshops and physical therapy consultations. We also work to strengthen social <coughs> connections and acknowledge achievement of our dancers. This year, we worked with artist Tony Perrin to create a sp special piece of jewelry, Dancer's Wings. The first sets of wings were awarded to our six senior dancers last year as a public acknowledgement of their years of dedication and effort. Friends of Metro Dance is also the producer of the Mini Nutcracker and the annual Spring Dance Concert. We purchase costumes, supplies, set pieces, and props for the performances. We hire the technical director, costume designer, guest choreographers, and performers. And we provide volunteers to support all mm -hmm. aspects of the performances. Our volunteers sew costumes, work backstage, provide meals for the tech crew, bake cookies to sell in the lobby, usher, sell tickets, sell flowers, merchandise, and more. This year, Friends of Metro Dance gave almost $11,000 to students for tuition and dance attire scholarships, including providing 13 pairs of point shoes for our dance students dancing on point in the mini nutcracker. Our budget for this coming year is $130,000. Our biggest fundraiser is the mini nutcracker. We also participate in the big payback and partnered with Kendra Scott in a successful fundraising event. We plan to continue to do similar events this year. This year we've been working on a new three-year strategic plan and part of that plan is to better organize what we're doing, especially in the area of fundraising. We want to increase our membership and are holding a membership drive this fall, which will culminate in a launch party at the end of October. We're looking to upgrade our database and we have created a committee to work specifically on grant funding and hope to take advantage of that this year. Friends of Metro Dance is working to increase community awareness <coughs> of our nonprofit and the work we do. We have restarted a quarterly newsletter. We are purchasing advertising in select markets, and we're in the process of updating our website to align with our strategic plan. And looking forward, Friends of Metro Dance plans to grow our membership and impact on the community, increase our fundraising efforts through donations, scholarships, and grants, develop additional partnerships within the community, and whenever the time arises, partner with Parks on the development of a new cultural arts building as a part of the Centennial Parks Master Plan. We appreciate your time and interest. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you have any questions for Ms. Turner? Thank you so much for your time and again your partnership with Metro Parks. We're going to go back to the top of our uh, agenda, consideration of the minutes. Have you all had an opportunity to review those? I'll accept a motion for approval. Or I'll make a motion. Thank you. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Um, Councilman Pridemore, former Councilman Pridemore, we're going to thank you for being here. Did he have a? Okay. You're on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Hello, it's good to see you again. Do you have any referrals for us? There are seats. Come on in. Yes. On the front row. Okay. We're going to move to our um, consent agenda. If you all uh, had an opportunity to review, we will accept the motion for approval. We'll take that all together. Thank you so much. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you so much. 
Uh, moving to new business, 10-19-02, staff request permission to adopt the name Kasi Gardner Senior Park for the site under construction <coughs> and informally referred to as Jefferson Street Park, located at 1606 Jefferson Street. Keisha Gardner Beard will make a presentation to the board. I did not know that was your name. <laughs> Hello. Hello. My name is Keisha Beard, and this is my granddaddy, Kay Gardner, 1924 on Jefferson Street. He was born son of a slave in Pulaski, Tennessee, and his mother had to give him up so he wouldn't be killed. Came to Nashville, and this is just like a little story of where he started and where he ended up. And when I saw the park across the street from now, it's a tattoo parlor. <laughs> it used to be a day spa that me and my husband ran from 2002 to, two, to last year. I had to stop the spa because of my MS. And we leased it out to a tattoo parlor and it's a mosque there now. So my grandfather would have he would love everything that's happening on 16th and Jefferson right now. And so when I saw the sign about the Jefferson Street Park, I thought, wow, this would be a great opportunity to have some celebration for my grandfather who has been on the street so long. He was an interesting guy, amazing. Started from nothing and went on to from developing the first subdivision for African Americans back in the 1950s to being the first black man to buy a building downtown, which was the K. Gardner building. Um, it used to be the Black Masonic building on 4th and Charlotte. It's not there anymore. And then he had the first motorized ambulance. He was a kind of guy that wanted to, whatever we didn't have, he wanted to do something to try to have it for our community. And I really, I'm so excited to be here. I want to thank y'all for having me here. I want to see about begging y'all <laughs> if we could have this park named after my grandfather. Me and my husband now, Gregory Beard, run the cemetery, Hills of Calvary. We service, um, about 150 to 170 families a year. The families that we serve are the families that my grandfather always served and they were the basically indigent to lower income families. And we still do that to this day. Now it's everybody. It's not just black people. It's all kind of people that are, you know, struggling with financial decisions of needing to figure out what to do with their, their final loved ones. Um, Y'all have any questions? Mm -hmm. I know that's quick, isn't it? We want to thank you so much for your presentation. It's good to see you. Good to yes, see you too. Yes, ma'am. We are going to uh, defer this to our naming committee. Uh, the committee will take this up and we will have a, um, that meeting next month. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're moving to 10-19-03. Former 9th District Council Member Bill Pridemore requests the board to accept a donation of a memorial sign valued at $1,261.79 in honor of Officer Eric Mumau near the Neely's Bend boat ramp in Peeler Park. Is there a staff recommendation? Recommend approval. We recommend approval. Is there any discussion? I'll accept a second. Uh, it's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 
the motion passes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Does he need to <laughs> say anything? Thank you. Did you, did you want to say anything? Uh, I was just going to I appreciate being here today with me as uh, uh, current council lady Hancock and also uh, uh, Mr. Rodney Jarvis, who is the contributor or donator of the sign. Mm -hmm. And they, he's been so gracious to work with us and work with members of part, uh, staff to um, have this memorial for um, Officer Moomau where, where this incident occurred. So yeah. I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. 10-19-04, Mr. Nat Hardin, representing the Nashville Predators, requests board approval to add four windows on the east wall of the Nashville Predators facility located at the Centennial Sportsplex. Is there a staff recommendation? Is there any discussion, any questions? I'll accept the motion. So moved. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All those around the motion passes 10-19-05. Ms. Lauren Bailey, representing the Nashville Food Project, requests board approval to increase total acreage to the three acres at the community farm in Mill Ridge Park and add a driveway and parking. Is there a staff recommendation? Recommend approval. Is there any discussion, any questions? A motion for approval. So, I'll second it. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. 10-19-06, Ms. Talu Schuler quinn CEO of the National Food Project, requests board approval to apply for USDA National Institute of Food and Agricultural's Community Food Project's competitive grant, and if approved, the funding is to be used primarily on purchasing equipment and operation of their programs in Mill Ridge Park. Is there a staff recommendation? Command approval. Any questions or discussion? I'll accept the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. 10-19-07, Ms. Jenny Hannon, Executive Director of the Friends of Warner Parks. Staff requests the board to accept. Who's staff requests the board to accept a gift of approximately $25,000 for the following improvements: sand bin and portalette fields, blinds at the Percy Warner Golf Course. Those three things, okay. Um, I'm sorry, let me clarify. Whose staff is requesting? Park staff, thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, staff recommendation is approval. Is there a discussion? Any discussion or questions? I'll accept a motion. Do we need it? Well, I'll, I'll clarify. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it is a, not a cash donation. It's the value of the, of the, um, the, the merchandise. And so it's not cash, just to clarify. Point, but recommend approval. Based on that, are there any questions? Installation and, and yes. All the okay. okay. Any other questions? All righty. Understanding that this is not a cash donation, I will accept the motion. Second. This has been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you so much. The motion mm -hmm. passes. 10 19 08. Staff requests board approval to adopt the child and adult care food program in six of Metro Park's after school programs. Is there any discussion? This is a uh, pretty big deal for us. It allows us to provide consistent and healthy meals for mm -hmm. six of our after school programs in East Nashville. Uh, if adopted, we plan to pilot this program to more sense, but we're starting with the East Nashville sites. And where does, what, where is the program from? It's uh, the food that gets a reimbursement program, it's a federally funded program. So they reimburse us for the food supplies that we buy. And we also utilize our staff to provide the food. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. The motion, the motion passes. That's fine. Uh, Oh, nine. I lost my place, y'all. 10 19 09. Staff requests board approval to further amend a previously approved amendment to the Greenway's conservation easement from Ryman Hospitality for the Opry Mills Greenway connector to include an additional 20 foot by 550 foot uh, in order to continue the Greenway Trail further to, to the north, terminating at New Trailhead. Is there a staff recommendation? Recommend approval, Cindy. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we do recommend approval for this. This is um, 
an easement where we added on to an existing easement you all approved at acquisition, this is giving us just an additional 550 feet. Okay. Land in more um, kind of important spot, allowing us to continue the trail onto the Upper Mills Mall. Are there any questions? I'll accept the motion. Make a motion. Second. Thank you so much. All, it has been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. We're moving on to our capital projects update. Mr. Tim Mish. I will just uh, mention uh, changes from last month. The Hadley Park Pavilion, uh, we did get uh, bids in on that and they all came in significantly over budget. So we are going to rebid that and try again, but this is a, a uh, custom designed pavilion to replace one of the uh, old picnic shelters there in the park. Uh, there are two new projects on your list, the Orchard Bend Swings and Pavilion and the Smith Springs Swings and Pavilion. We were able to um, uh, do both of these projects because there were some, uh, uh, the, the, the initial major projects on those sites uh, came in under budget, so we had a little bit of extra money to add to those playgrounds there. And uh, the new playground at uh, Cornelia Fort in Shelby Bottoms is substantially complete, and um, uh, that also that received some supplemental funding from Friends of Shelby Park as well. Updates on Jefferson Street Park. Sure, on Jefferson Street Park, the that construction phase is uh, funded entirely up by MDHA, so we're they're managing construction, and we're going through their. Uh, uh, processes on all of it so um, they are wrapping up permitting on that and I hope that they can we hope that they can break ground on that um, soon Keisha just are there, uh, we'll move to upcoming special activities and events. Jackie Jones? Yes. Well, as you know, we always have a lot going on, and October is no different. If you look at the uh, series that's at the very top of your page, you'll see that the full moon picking parties are still going on, as well as a couple of farmers market and jazz on the Cumberland. With all of our series events, they end this month, in Oct well, in October. So if there are any that you have not attended, uh, this would be the month to go. Uh, a couple of things, a couple of events that I want to draw your attention to. This Saturday, we're expecting about uh, approximately 50,000 people in the park for Celebrate uh, Nashville, which is a cultural festival. I believe this is the 30th year for that event, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, at any point, the event goes on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We'll have a variety of performances, uh, uh, a world market, a global market, as well as food. Uh, it's one of the most popular events in Nashville, so if you have not attended, uh, this one would be the one to attend. Then on Thursday, I believe it is, we have dinner on the by the bridge. We always get that wrong because it's been on the bridge for so long, but Cindy will tell you yes. about that. Yes, uh, Dinner by the Bridge is uh, Green Ways for Nashville's large fundraiser that does directly benefit Green Ways, um, Metro Green Ways and Open Space. We have, they have just a few tickets left, so um, if you're interested, we'd encourage you to go today to uh, greenwaysfornashville.org and uh, get your tickets for Thursday night. Weather is Looking good, warm, but good. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to move to department updates. No. We have none. Okay, report of the director. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, as Jackie just mentioned, there's a lot going on, <coughs> uh, a lot of planned and scheduled events um, in the park system um, this month. But over the past couple of weeks, our, our system um, has experienced some events that were unplanned, uh, one of which uh, had a very happy ending. Uh, yesterday, Mr. Buzz Carter, who had been a hiker that was lost in Beeman Park, was found alive and in good condition yesterday after uh, he was lost for, what, 48 hours, nearly 48 hours since Saturday, um, Saturday afternoon, um, and spent two nights 
uh, in the park or nearby um, lost. And I just want to give a special thank you to um, all of our staff who assisted with the search and coordinating those events with Metro Police, with all of the hundreds of volunteers that came out to help um, search for uh, Mr. Carter. I think there's an article in today's Tennessean about him and his experience. So uh, you could look at that, take a look at that if you have a chance. But I want to give a special thank you to two of our Metro Park staff people in the uh, Nature Center Division, uh, Bill Troop and Chris Guerin. Uh, Chris stayed at Beeman Park all night on Saturday, night assisting uh, the search and rescue for Mr. Carter, and then Bill was there um, a large part of the next two days, helping to coordinate, assisting with maps and knowledge of the, of the landscape there. So I want to give a special thanks to them. Uh, and again, I'm so grateful, I think we all are, that uh, Mr. Carter was found um, alive in pretty good condition. Um, on a more somber note, I know that all of you are aware of the murder of Mr. George Carpenter, um, who was an employee at Shelby Golf Course um, and uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there has been um, a tremendous outpouring of uh, support for the department, and we wanted to let you all know that there will be a celebration of life uh, for Mr. Carpenter over at Shelby on uh, Sunday, October 13th at 9.30. Um, so if you're able to attend, uh, please do. I, I want to give a special thank you again to the Metro Police Department for all of their support and leadership in um, uh, just supporting our staff, number one, and then to um, searching for the assailant, uh, which is still in progress. Um, a group of our employees attended the National Recreation and Park Association Conference uh, last week in Baltimore, Maryland, and they had a great time. I've talked to a couple of them, um, and they have come back with some new innovations and program strategies, so I'm eager to kind of implement those and um, uh, see how we can improve our system. Um, you may or may not know that the National Conference will be in Nashville in 2021. So over the past few years, we've had a delegation of employees going to the conference to see how it runs and see how we can um, make it as run as smoothly when it comes here to Nashville. So um, we appreciate them. Uh, Jack, I already mentioned the uh, Celebrate Nashville uh, Festival. If you're able to attend, I'm again going to emphasize that if you're able to attend, please do. Um, and then a date for the ribbon cutting for Frankie Pierce Park, which is um, in Capitol View, is pending. We are, uh, we'll get that date to you as soon as possible. Um, our community center staff has been um, in some is in some preliminary uh, discussions with the Metro Police Department about partnering partnering. Uh, with their school resource officers during fall breaks and probably spring break so they can come into the community center and so that young people in particular but all members of the community can interact with uh, police officers under per, uh, positive circumstances. So we're grateful for that uh, potential partnership. It looks very promising. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to mention uh, there is an op-ed in, I know it's on Tennessean.com uh, right now, but it'll probably appear in the paper, the print paper, from Jeff Haynes about, um, about Metro Parks. Uh, it is a, a great op-ed. I appreciate uh, his support. As you know, we took a tour mm -hmm. of several of our facilities um, a few weeks ago, and um, Jeff was so inspired to uh, talk about what he saw and some of our needs, which you all know. So mm -hmm. uh, if you have time, please take a look at that. And Give Jeff a shout, and uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good. Are there any announcements, requests for future agenda items, or open items that we need to discuss? All right. If not, I'll set the motion for adjournment. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now what am I saying? Yeah. I kept thinking it was me. This has been a service of the Metro National Network.
If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.